Okay, Congressman Conyers, what precedents are there in history and contemporary uh, that support uh, reparations? Well, first of all, uh, reparations is a political concept uh, that has been used uh, throughout uh, all history, not just American history. Uh, it's been used uh, in terms of Israel, uh, the Alaskan natives, the American Indians, uh, the uh, Japanese Americans who were interned uh, during World War II, and uh, uh, in terms of the Middle East conflict that it has been raised more than once in terms of the Persian Gulf War that, that uh, reparations uh, was an appropriate way to uh, conclude uh, that activity. So it's a, a, a very standard. Uh, after World War I, there were reparations between nations. And so this concept comes to us uh, with a rich history. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to uh, raise it up in relationship to the one area that it's never been given much modern consideration, and that is uh, the descendants of uh, Africans who were slaves, of African Americans uh, whose uh, forebears uh, gave up so much work, uh, worked under such incredibly horrible conditions. And what uh, would be an appropriate way to address that very long-standing, difficult, and uh, very sensitive question? And so I have proposed a measure uh, that would take this out of the closet and off the dusty shelves of history and examine uh, what, if any, appropriate role uh, reparations could do in addressing the relationship between African Americans and their government uh, in this present moment. And so uh, what I've suggested that we do is create a uh, national committee of inquiry to hold hearings to examine uh, what this relationship could be in terms of reparations and to bring these uh, recommendations back to the Congress so that the Congress could then begin its debate on this matter. Uh, it's been my position that the members of the Commission should, uh, first of all, be people who are knowledgeable and expert in this subject and in this history. Uh, secondly, that they uh, hold hearings across the country so that many people uh, could, could be able to input into this. Th these would be very important hearings. And then third, that they would make their own recommendations based on uh, their own knowledge and and, and what they uh, found out and, and what they've heard and listened to and read in the course of the committee's activity. So that's uh, what we would, uh, would, would be one way of, of approaching this age-old American question that now begs to be resolved one way or the other. Now, your commission that you're proposing uh, with you know, the nationwide uh, inquiry, is that a, a the offspring of H.R. 40, or is this yes. the, Okay, so that's part of the H.R. 40. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with H.R. 40? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to predict that uh, what happens with uh, most bills that I introduce is that it will be uh, uh, debated, heard in the committees, and eventually passed. Uh, it's had very difficult sledding. Uh, we're in the process of organizing ourselves so that we begin to bring this to the attention of the, the senators and congressmen that represent uh, all of us in the Congress. In, in many instances, uh, a number of uh, members of Congress have very scanty information about this. And it's, it's uh, our job, as uh, those who support it, uh, to make sure that your two senators and your one congressman 
uh, know as much about it as possible. Now I know this is it's difficult to determine uh, how long this this process may take place, but what's your best intuition? What's your intuition tell you about how long it's going to take to make any headway with the whole issue of reparations, at least from the standpoint of getting at a, a hearing, a national hearing, so to speak? Well, that's two uh, situations that we have. One is to get a national hearing, and I'm, I'm very confident that we can do that. Uh, but when passage comes, is going to turn on events that have not yet occurred, organizational activity that has yet to be uh, put into a strategy and to be implemented. And so, uh, and then uh, to, to anticipate the nature and makeup and character of the Congress is going to also be very hard to do. One other question, Congressman. You know, with all the problems that African Americans <coughs> suffer uh, right now, some of our social ills of crime and drugs and what have you, I can hear a lot of naysayers saying, well, why are you people focusing in on reparations when we have young people killing one another in the street? Uh, how do you respond to that kind of uh, mentality? Well, what I try to do is make a uh, relationship between the problems that we have now and the possibility of reparations being able to help it. In other words, uh, the more we really understand the character, the history, the nature of the deprivation that has created the uh, African American community to exist in this country and the circumstances under which it exists, the more we will be able to resolve those circumstances. And in, in this situation, uh, the examination of reparations could be a very highly enlightening activity for many people, not just African Americans, but everybody, uh, inquiring into uh, the nature of this issue and how it could affect uh, the problems that exist today. Well, sir, I want to thank you very much. Real pleasure. Keep up the good work. Thank you.